Jeffrey Eugenides' 1993 book The Virgin Suicides was his first. A group of boys from a rich Detroit suburb tell the tale of the five Lisbon sisters, who all committed suicide in a year. Youngest Cecilia Lisbon commits suicide first. Her first effort happens when she cuts her wrists in a bath. Paul Baldino, the son of a rich gangster, finds her by entering the Lisbon home via the neighborhood's storm drains. Paul sneaks inside the home to upstage Peter Sisson, the only boy to ever be invited. When Peter helps Mr. Lisbon with a scale model of the cosmos in his classroom, he gets invited to dinner. Peter snoops around in the Lisbon sisters' bathroom and finds a used Tampax, proudly informing the other boys. When Paul hears this, he boasts that he will go into the Lisbon home and observe the girls bathing. But, when he sneaks into the home and enters the bathroom, he discovers Cecilia in bloody bathwater holding a laminated card with a Virgin Mary image. He phones the police, horrified. Cecilia survives this ordeal. A psychiatrist tells her parents that she needs to spend more time with people. The Lisbons host a party, and the neighborhood boys are excited to get invites. They enter the Lisbon home and are led to the basement, where the sisters are waiting. After an uneasy start, everyone begins talking, except Cecilia, who sits silently with her bandaged wrist. She eventually begs her father to let her go upstairs, and he reluctantly agrees. When she climbs the stairs, everyone is quiet. A fence post impaling Cecilia's corpse breaks the quiet. Mr. Lisbon rushes outside to aid Cecilia, but it's evident she hasn't survived. Cecilia dies, leaving the neighborhood clueless. The Lisbons seem odd and aloof when adults offer their sympathy. Father Moody, the village priest, can't get Mr. Lisbon to speak about what happened. He observes the sad condition of the home as he moves through the hallways. When Father Moody finds the Lisbon sisters gathered in a bedroom, he is struck by their distress and filth. In hindsight, he is certain that they didn't have any intentions to commit suicide after seeing their anguish. The Lisbon sisters don't see the boys all summer. Lux Lisbon starts to sneak around with some guys. Her parents won't allow her to date, so she must be cautious. Trip Fontaine, who falls for Lux, is barely noticed by her until he follows her to an assembly, sits next to her, and whispers that he's going to ask Lux's dad if he can take her out. He insists on coming over to watch TV with the family, even though she says there's no possibility. Tripp spends the whole evening watching TV with the Lisbon family, but Mr. and Mrs. Lisbon sit on the couch between Tripp and Lux. Mr. Lisbon finally tells him it's time to go and Lux walks him to the door while looking at him with a sorry face because she knows her parents will never let her go out with him. He goes to his car in a bad mood and sits there for a moment. Then, out of nowhere, it seems like a deity is hovering over him and sucking his face. Lux is straddling him, he realizes, kissing him so intensely that he can hardly hold his composure, grasping for her in a frantic, overwhelmed manner till she quickly disappears. In the following weeks, the boys learn that Lux has been grounded. Mr. and Mrs. Lisbon get stricter, and their home becomes worse. Tripp goes to Mr. Lisbon's class and declares his desire to take Lux to the homecoming dance. Mr. Lisbon says it's up to his wife and that making an exception for Lux wouldn't be fair to his other kids. Tripp promises to gather a gang of men to take all the Lisbon girls. Tripp visits the Lisbon house the evening of the homecoming dance along with three other boys. The sisters are really happy and excited, and they seem to enjoy the night, especially Lux and Bonnie, who sneak under the bleachers with Tripp and Joe Hill Conley to drink peach schnapps and kiss while the sweet taste is still on their lips. But by night's end, Tripp and Lux disappear so the others must go back without them. Years later, the boys in the neighborhood discover that Tripp and Lux had intercourse on the football field. Tripp had feelings for Lux, but after they had intimacy, he wanted to be alone, so he abandoned her on the field. After the homecoming dance, 
Mr. and Mrs. Lisbon become increasingly stricter, scarcely allowing the daughters to leave the house, even removing them from school. At this point, Mr. Lisbon resigns as a teacher, but most people realize that he was forced to quit since none of the local parents believed he can manage his own family. Lux begins having intercourse with different guys on the roof of the Lisbon home, which is even more scandalous. The boys spy on Lux's activities from across the street and see that she's becoming slim. Lux fakes stomach discomfort to obtain a covert pregnancy test at the hospital, persuading the doctor not to notify her parents. She finds out that she is not pregnant but has HPV. As winter progresses, the Lisbon residence deteriorates. By spring, the boys don't think about the sisters as much. After all, it's baseball season, and they haven't seen the girls in a long time except for brief glimpses. At one point, the parks department comes to the Lisbon's front yard to cut down a diseased tree. Most of the town's elm trees are sick with a fungus and need to be taken down. Nevertheless, the Lisbon sisters prevent them from felling it, since it was Cecilia's favorite tree. In late spring, the boys believe the sisters are conversing cryptically with them. They are right. The sisters are talking to them, as shown by the notes they leave in their mailboxes. One of the notes says, Remember us. In the end, the boys call the girls. Mr. Lisbon answers first, but they remain on the line until they can hear the girls. Once Mr. Lisbon hangs up, they hear a weak, dejected sister say hello and hang up. The boys continue to get calls, but they opt to hold the phone to a stereo instead of speaking. For a time, they alternate between the guys playing blatantly amorous tunes and the Lisbon sisters responding with a song of their own choice. In the end, the sisters play Bread's Make It With You, sending the males into a frenzy. After this interaction, the Lisbons write to the boys to wait for their signal the next night. The males are thrilled, believing the sisters want to be spared from their miserable existence. After sipping beer in their common treehouse and waiting for the Lisbon sisters to wave through a window, the boys sneak into the Lisbon home via the back door, where Lux awaits them. With their imaginations running wild, they agree to go to Florida with her, while Lux insists they wait for her sisters to pack. She unbuckles Chase Buell's belt, and as she hears a bang upstairs, says they'll have to wait. They wait and find Cecilia's party decorations in the basement. Suddenly, to their horror, they discover that Bonnie has hung herself, and they escape the basement. The boys later piece it all together. Lux just unbuckled Chase's belt to buy time until her sister kicked over the trunk she was standing on. Then she walked to her parents' garage and started the automobile, asphyxiating herself in it. Mary stuck her head in the oven. Therese was most likely already dead after swallowing a slew of medicines. Mary survives her suicide attempt, but only briefly. Next summer, the males come home from a party after drinking and making out with ladies and discover paramedics lifting Mary's dead corpse onto a stretcher. Like Therese, she died by swallowing pills. After the Lisbon suicides, the Parks Department takes down Cecilia's elm. Everyone thinks the nation is in decline and the neighborhood is harsh and odd. The Lisbon sisters are suspected of foreseeing this downfall and choosing to die. The boys will never know why the sisters died, but they will always think about them. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.